Hey, this is Vaughn Vernon. Welcome to my Design Accelerator tutorials. I'm following up from this past week's video where I talked about why I hate the outbox pattern. So I'm going to revisit that today. Seems like there were a number of misunderstandings and uh, I was even accused of clickbaiting the industry and unprovoked attacks on a software pattern. I didn't know that uh, software patterns, patterns could even provoke anyone. But anyway, I have uh, some explaining to do and I'm glad that you're joining me again today. Thank you. My tutorials are sponsored by my company Kalele. You can find us on the web at kalele.io and you can learn about my most popular workshop the IDDD workshop, which is found at kalele.io slash IDDD workshop. And I also wanted to tell you about a few upcoming events. For example, on April 14th through 17th, 2025, I welcome you to look into the Explore DDD conference. This is run by Paul Rayner and it's uh, made its way back after COVID. It'll be about, uh, well, actually a little over a year from the 2024 reboot of the Explore DDD conference. And you can find out more information about Explore DDD at explorededd.com. One thing that I especially look forward to hearing about from Explore DDD this year, or coming up in 2025, is Eric Evans continuing his discussion about AI and, and how it plays with domain-driven design. In what ways is it possible to assist with domain-driven design? He keynoted about that in 2024, and he's going to follow up on that topic this year in, I guess it's a two-hour uh, hands-on session with Eric, so you definitely want to look into that. Uh, then uh, another conference that I wanted to, to actually not a conference, it's an unconference, it's Como Camp. And I was just talking with one of the organizers this past week about Como Camp, and they're selling out tickets very rapidly. It's a three day event, it's an unconference, it's actually quite minimal cost. I think it's around 600 euros, something like that, for uh, three days, and the first day include some uh, hands-on tutorials. I think it's, or, or you know, kind of workshoppy kind of things that's uh, about, f I think each one is four hours long or so. And then this, the first day folds into discussions on the next two days. Anyway, you want to look into this at comocamp.org, May 7th through 9th, 2025. And just to be clear, neither of these two events are sponsoring my Design Accelerator tutorials. I just decided as a friend of the organizers of these things, I, I just wanted to promote them. So I hope they don't mind me bringing it up, but uh, I can't see how they would. But anyway, I hope you do uh, look into those. So let's get on with our tutorial then. Assuming you watched last week's tutorial, hopefully you saw that I stated that the outbox pattern solves a set of problems. I also asserted that the outbox pattern can cause some problems. And then I explained both how I think the outbox pattern can cause problems and a solution for that. Then I provided a context. The context was a domain-driven design bounded context that emits domain events. And that was clearly shown in this diagram with three different users submitting three different REST requests. And those REST requests end up causing either the creation or the modification of entities A, B, and C. And then an event occurs due to the creation or modification of those entities. And then I provided a possible solution where a journal table, which is responsible for having a unique ID for each of the events and a column to persist the individual domain events themselves. In addition to that, I offered the idea of a subscriptions table where each subscriber would have their own position into the journal table. So for example, at 10,021, position 10,021, that would be a specific ID within the journal table 
and this ID would be, for example, an auto increment or a sequence. I do understand, and in fact, I've already provided solutions for the potential problem that due to multi-threading, multi any one of these sequences or auto increments could be inserted into the table out of order. Eventually, a, any gap left in the table would be closed by other transactions that follow afterwards. So, for example, if 100 and 101 were inserted sequentially, and then 103, 102 could then be inserted later. Is that a gap due to a rollback? Or is that a gap simply because one thread's race to the table beat another thread's race to the table, and 103 was inserted before 102? Well, what you have to do is, if you see that gap, you have to understand, is that a gap that is only caused by a rollback? So it's just going to be a, a gap that's going to have to be closed in some fashion so that we don't detect that again. On the other hand, if it is simply a latent insert of ID 102 and this domain event corresponding to it, then we're going to have to reread or requery to include that before we put 103 on the messaging mechanism. But this combination of these two tables gives the opportunity for multiple subscribers to have their own scan position through the table, and then each of these will continue to scan from the lowest ID or the lowest position to the highest position until they catch up, or they may never catch up to the actual highest due to throughput. And whatever the case, they will continue to publish events as long as the bounded context remains deployed and running and remains commissioned throughout its life cycle. I really don't know how some thought that I was suggesting that I would implement my own message bus or broker or anything like that. This point four here shows I did not suggest implementing my own or your own message bus or broker. As you can see here, I have a messaging mechanism that I continued to refer to and that the journal table events would be published through a messaging mechanism. This messaging mechanism could be anything. It could be AWS SQS, Google PubSub, Azure Message Bus, RabbitMQ, Kafka. Huh. Notice how I put Kafka last just because today everybody seems to think that the only way to publish events is through Kafka. Not the case at all. It's fine if you want to use Kafka. I've used Kafka. Fine, it's good for what it does, but Kafka is not the end-all be-all. So you have several different choices here and many more than I'm even showing here. So you could use a different kind of messaging mechanism here. You simply have a thread or any kind of background process that is reading the subscriptions and the journal table and one by one or in a batch, whatever the case may be, is sending events in through one of these kinds of messaging mechanisms, which then causes it to be queued and published, whether it's through a topic or exchange or a simple one directional queue. It really doesn't matter. You have several choices here to do that. But please understand, I was in no way suggesting that you should implement your own message bus or broker. There's one more thing that I have to clear up. I hate pineapple on pizza. Oh, wait. What I really meant to say is that I hate the outbox pattern. But that's really the same thing, isn't it? When you think about it, the outbox pattern, whether or not you like pineapple on pizza, yeah, kind of the same thing. It's an opinion. For a food, it's a matter of taste. For a software pattern, it's a usage. If you have a specific context in which you're using a pattern, and that context is not well suited by a specific pattern, then it's not very useful. And when people try to use it, for that specific purpose, and it doesn't work well, well I kind of hate it. I also hate the anemic domain model to the point where I don't even like to say anemic domain model. I just say anemic model. Why? Because I see it overused. Is it useful ever? Of course it is. Well, anemic model, maybe it's really just transaction script or something like that that should be used. But the point is, I see anemic model used everywhere. And when I teach, coach, consult with teams, I'm trying to help them overcome those problems. 
And so when I face that, I really come to hate the anemic model. I certainly wasn't talking about a person or a culture or a race or anything of that kind. So I'd like to just work together on Design Accelerator. So I hope you'll join me next time. Until then, take care.